All right, everybody, we are live. Those of you who have joined us, those of you getting those notifications, don't worry. This is recorded. So if you miss anything, you can always hit that rewind button and start from the beginning. But today we are going to talk about a topic that many travel business owners actually don't know how to get to an end. Let's just put it that way. But before we jump into everything, what we're going to do first is we're going to do some introductions first. So me, some of you may know me, some of you don't know me. My name is Tisha Spencer. If you know me on Facebook, you might know me as Tisha Lady. Um, I am the owner of Original Platinum Travels and um, Original Platinum Enterprises. And what basically I do is I don't just book people's amazing trips around the world. I also help agents grow their businesses and learn about the travel industry, as well as how to grow themselves in the business, right? Because remember, we do more than book trips, as I'm sure my guests can understand. We don't just click, 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 and you're gone. We got to do so much more in between. But today, what I wanted to do is I didn't want you guys just to hear from me because I wanted you to hear some other voices so you can get some other views on this topic because everyone is going to have a different journey of how they discovered and are creating their personal niche inside or niche, depending on how you say it, in their business. So first, first what I want to go ahead and do is invite my first guest. His name is Ryan Taylor. Now, Ryan is a certified travel um, advisor and he has tons of vacation experience. And guys, let me let you know, this man loves to sail, right? Not only is he the owner of the agency called Ryan Fitness and Travel, or Ryan FNT for short, he's also an up, up and coming travel to AG, agency owner. I'm stumbling over my words, people, in Maryland. And he has been doing this business since 2017. And his fun fact for the day, he's left handed. And he says, Go lefties as I raise my right hand. Ryan, how are you doing today? I'm doing great, Tisha. Thanks so much for inviting me on. I'm super excited to talk about today's topic. I am so excited to share with everybody today. Awesome. Now, the second person I brought in is somebody that I recently just connected with. And, you know, she has a lot of great things going on with her. Her name is Jania. I hope I said that right. And she's the owner of Destination Coco Travel and Lifestyle. She has been in the travel business, guys, for now about three years, and she's based out of Columbus, Ohio. Not only is she a full-time teacher, a full-time content creator, she is also a full-time travel professional. Now, she specializes in, well, you know what? I'm going to let her tell you what her specialization is. And her, ide her ideal client is millennial Black women who deserve that long-awaited vacations, and they are ready to soak up the sun with other Black professionals. Now she created a group on Facebook where many of you may have may know her from called Brown Girls Travel. And she wanted to be able to do something that was going to focus on brown girls who travel in the travel industry, something for us and by us. Now, if you look in the description, you'll be able to not only follow both of these great people on Instagram, but you also have links to their websites and different things like that. So thank you for being here, Janiya, Jania. Am I saying it right? Yes, I want to get it right. Thank you so Jania. much for having me. I'm so excited. <laughs> All right, guys. So now those of you who are watching, we want to make sure that you are putting your comments below. Let us know where you're checking in from, whether you're watching now on a replay. If this is a replay, always do my favorite thing, hashtag replay. But I love to see where everybody is watching from. How did you find out about this? And so much more. This will be very interactive if you know me very well. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're just going to round robin this table as I ask questions. The first question I have is, what is your specialty or your niche? Can you tell us? Anybody go. I guess I'll start. So I want. So first of all, my passion and therein my niche is health and wellness travel, and I integrate that with my favorite form of travel, which is cruises. So I look to craft health and wellness experiences for my clients, and spend a lot of my time focusing on things that are about. Um, enhancing the mind, the body, the spirit. So you'll see a lot of um, my excitement about the spa treatments or the types of activities that you can do that help to integrate wellness into your next vacation. Okay. And Jania, how about you? I would say that mine is just like we were saying, like having us Black women and just women in general being together um, and providing a well-awaited experience all together. Um, normally we are in a, at an all-inclusive resort, but I have done a couple of trips that were, um, you know, in villas. But basically, you know, a lot of people like to sit and wait around for their friends or, or people to travel with them. And um, I just try to provide experiences where you don't have to. If you got some friends, you got some girls you want to bring, that's fine. But if not, we can, you know, book now and make friends and things later once we get there and we um, create these experiences. 
Awesome. Now for me, guys, mine is culture and cuisine. Basically what that means is my guests, my clients, my favorite people, they get to travel the world and experience the cultures through the cuisine. Now, my favorite form of travel is a mixture of, of um, cruises and land because I am starting to get more into the escorted trips into like Europe and Dubai and things like that. So now my next question, because we're going to dive deeper, we're going to do this in levels, right? What made you decide on your niche? And did you have other niches before you landed on this one? Yeah, so for me, wellness is an experience that we have to take with us every day. And I noticed that with my target market, with my demographic, a lot of the people that when they come to me asking for help picking a vacation, they're really asking for someone to help them to really unplug and to disconnect. They want something that will help them to, to ease their mind away and transition from the process is the daily issues that they go through in their in their routine and their lifestyle, right? And so wellness gives them the opportunity to unplug, to disconnect. And I've responded to that in kind by looking for those experiences that give them that luxury or that exclusivity from being able to um, disconnect from those daily pressures of life. And for you? I would say that it's it just kind of came because I myself was the one who wanted to travel and stuff and couldn't and nobody was ready. And then, you know, everybody has their own lives going on. Everybody has their own passions, their own things going on. So I would just put out a trip. Um, you know, I want to go here and it kind of just birthed from there. So I try to just make sure with my my clients, you know, they're a lot of the time they are millennials as i said and they are liking to take pictures and they're liking to do you know color coordinated things and stuff like that to where if i am hosting i can but if not then there are enough things that are planned in the in the in the trip that um they can have fun themselves and create those experiences so making sure that they're going to places you know that have things that allow them to leave off the resort and then come back and, and um, curate new friendships and relationships within each other Awesome. Now for me, I fell into the luxury aspect because I'm bougie and I'm not afraid to say it. My mom was like, I called my mom bougie one day and she was like, Tisha, I am not bougie. I said, mom, you're the one that wants the room that has either its own private swim up pool or its own private pool that nobody else can see. I think you're bougie. It's okay though. We love it. And she was like, well, if you put it that way, I guess I am bougie. That, so I cater cool. to those who are the bougie crowd, to those who are looking for those experiences that regular people may not have access to. You know, one of the things I definitely want to say when it comes to luxury, luxury doesn't mean more dollar signs. Luxury just means that when you're traveling with your friends and you've booked with me, they're sharing a shuttle, but you got a private car. There's very, they're in a regular room where you're privileged and a butler came and picked you up from the front desk and drove you to your room. You know, luxury is about those experiences and those added on things that other people don't normally get to have. Now, yes, yeah, sometimes it is a little bit more expensive, but that value is so much better. And I want my clients to be able to travel and say, I just had the best dang vacation and I felt like royalty. I'm back at work and I need another trip. So they call me back. You know, so that's how I kind of like fell into luxury. So each of you have your own sub levels when it comes to your niches, niches, right? You know, whether it is a mode of travel, like Ryan, you said you landed on cruises versus because you could have easily done land. And, you know, you know, um, Jania, I keep making sure I'm, I'm saying your name right. You I'm got it every it. time you got it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you went from being yours. Yours is more of like the all inclusive pampered, but you're catering towards a certain target market. Now, Ryan did mention something earlier about how his target market influenced you. What are y'all's true target markets as of today? Because we all know that could change in like a week. That's very true. So currently, when I look at my current client base, my target market is going to be the Gen X crowd that tends to reside in the uh, low to middle income areas. And they tend to favor those experiences that grant them that um, that all-inclusive feel, the ability to basically pay for one price and know that they're getting everything that they need. So I like to create I like to create packages that will um, basically give them one price and they know they don't have to pay anything else. And the benefit of that is that they respond by telling their friends 
um, as well. And they tend to reach out to me, not just for cruises, but also for land packages as well. Because there is, a, like you said, there is a value in being able to give that true pampering, that true luxury for what we have studied and what we learn as agents. Everyone defines luxury differently and everybody is going to have a different need based on what they're looking for. So I get the, the benefit of being able to match them towards those. Mine is very similar to Ryan, as in just being able to provide those packages and showing them how, you know, you can take care of business beforehand. So then once we get there, then you're able to relax. And a lot of people might not, A, know that this is something that's available to them or B, not really know how it works. You know, I get a lot of clients who, when I give them a package, they're like, okay, well, what is the breakdown of the drinks and the food? I'm like, you're not understanding what I'm saying. It's unlimited. <laughs> so just sharing them and showing them that experience in my clients um, are, a lot, I would say like in between, like mid twenties to like forties. Um, and a lot of people who do reside on social media, um, and, you know, enjoy taking pictures and doing videos and things like that. Cause a lot of people are doing that anyways. And it helps because like Ryan said, then they're going and showing the next people we know word of mouth just by posting pictures and videos and stuff and how that works. Like, how did you get there? Who sent you there? And then we're almost turning into like little ambassadors for the resorts and stuff because we're posting nice pictures when we're there and showing us having a good time so then they're wanting to send their um friends there and go there because you know they're coming a lot of the time they're coming for the group trip and then you know they might say okay now i want to go to another resort with just my girls or even some people that they met on the trip very true both of y'all said some really true things for me um my demographics has been more towards the professionals it's been basically the older generation x because that's what kind of i am as well as the younger baby boomers because that's where my mom is and that group right there it's a mixture of people who have the funds to travel they know what they want to do and they just want to have fun that's a nice you know, group that's a nice it is. age group it's a it's a great age group so my age groups tend to be people in mid 30s to mid 60s but they all love to have fun they're still looking for that luxury they want to be pampered because it's either the group of people who have the money and they're ready to spend it because they've they've sat around they've done the 40 40 and it's time to have fun or it's the group of i'm not waiting for the 40 40 and i have it now or i'm gonna find it and we're gonna go have fun but in the end they all just want to go and have fun so what i notice is all of us are really working between the generation x the, the millennials and the baby boomers we're covering all three areas and what if you guys watch and haven't noticed is they all want the same things they just want it at different levels and different ways, but they all kind of want the same basis of all the same same um, types of travels and the things that they want to see. Now, one of the things that we're going to take it back a little bit, we're going to go backwards. We're going to go back way, way back when we first got started in travel, if y'all can remember that. Because um, you never, I did stay with um, Jania how long you've been in, but I've been doing travel for 20 years. So we're going to go really way back for me. Um, what got you into travel? What made you say, you know what, I'm going to be a travel agent today? <laughs> wow that's a that's a, a do you have all day <laughs> so uh wow so it's 2017 and i am looking for another opportunity to kind of learn more about myself and to also be a resource for people right and then it's it's fate would have it i did go to a particular conference where i did meet miss tisha spencer and i've heard so many things about her and i'm thinking to myself you know, I'm involved with the op the capacity to be a travel advisor, but I don't know how I'm supposed to grow it or matriculate it with just the tools that I've been explained, right? So I spend an hour and to an hour and a half, and you know, I you know, I give a lot of credit to to Tisha and a lot of my other mentors where they've given me a lot of amazing ideas on how I can grow the business into something that makes sense to me, and in turn, they gave me a really good insight on what it's is about in terms of being a travel advisor. It's more than, like you said, just serving about creating those trips. It's about being an informant. It's about being that person that is um, an advocate on behalf of your clients. It's about making sure 
that you are taking the best care of your clients and all the many ways that we can do that and how we are able to be servant leaders effectively in the industry. So I got into the I got into this primarily because ha, uh, my mentors gave me the tools that I needed to grow my business from being just a hobby into being something more about um, developing my personal my personal skills, my communication skills, my customer service skills, all of them to help grow the business to where I am today. I think that answers your question, but I'm more than happy to go into it if you if you know if you have a couple more hours. So, <laughs> so I uh, go ahead, go ahead, Tisha. No, I would just that's 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 a good thing because you know one of the things that he he said was, and I liked how he phrased it. He was already in the travel business but he wasn't a travel agent yet. And at some point he made that pivot and said, let me work my business and make this real. And I think we have a lot of agents out there who are in the business, but they're not actually working the business. They're just here, not knowing what to do. There are so many people who you have conversations with. And it's like, like I have met one young lady. She's literally an agent without the credentials. She's like, yeah, I'm always planning trips for my friends and for my families. I'm even making itineraries for them. I'm the one who's looking up the flights and stuff. I'm like, but you're not getting paid for it. Yeah. <laughs> so my niche, um, can, I, well, I started because I um, had the opportunity when I was still in college at Ohio State. I got to travel abroad to Brazil. And that was my first time going overseas. And I fell in love that Brazil has a, a, a special sp space in my heart. Um, they actually, El Salvador in Brazil has the biggest population of black people outside of Africa. A lot of people know. So I just, I really had a great time there. And then a little bit after that, I got to go to Jamaica and I stayed at the Royalton White Sands and it was for um, someone's wedding reception. And I got there and you know, the, the, the first time is just the best time. I'm like, what is this? Oh my gosh, we had a ball. We kicked it so hard. It was so much fun. I'm like, I have to help everybody get to this place. Everybody deserves to have this. Everybody deserves to have fun. I mean, we were kicking it with the bartenders. It, like they had clocked out and then they came to the reception and they were drinking and partying <laughs> with us. We were just having so much fun. So after that, that's really what kickstarted me when I came back, I just started researching. I'm like, how do I get into this? Because one of my uncles, he was an agent first. So I was just kind of learning and having a conversation with him and it kind of just the snowballed after that. And here we are. <laughs> well, that sounds like that was fun. That sounds like that was a great reception Definitely. right there when the bartenders come down and party with you. <laughs> yes. So for me, I got started out of necessity because I had just joined a sorority. And the first thing we wanted to do was to travel with our fraternity brothers. And then, you know, we're expecting since they go to this big event every year, they had this stuff locked in. They knew where we was going to stay. And I remember this conversation. I asked one of my frat brothers and I said, so where are we staying? He was like, oh, <laughs> wherever I find a pillow. I said, no, that's not going to work for us. We, we, we need to know where we're staying before we get there. So I started planning. And then I said, you know what? I had an aha moment. I remember sitting on the couch at my apartment and I was like, I should be able to get paid for this. And I did some research and I found out I could get paid for the work I was going to be doing anyway. And it just made sense because I was going to school for hospitality management anyway. So it just kind of like spiraled after that. And I started planning a lot of Greek related events when I was an undergrad. And then, you know, I've been in several different host agencies just because guys understand it is okay to change host agencies. You are not stuck you have the freedom to move around to find the right family that's going to make you happy and make you money. Just thought I would throw that in there because I know some people feel they feel stuck. Now, when we when I first got started, and this is going to segue into our next question, I was booking everything just because I thought that's what I had to do. I booked everything and anything that came my way, and I realized it wasn't fun for me to book everything. And it wasn't until 2015, I started in 02, still booking everything, that I realized I like cruises. I went on a cruise with my family and I said, that was the first cruise I think I had been on in like over a decade. Or maybe it was actually my first cruise. It might've been actually my first cruise. And all I remember was, so this is what cruising is like. I only have to unpack one time and I get to go to multiple destinations. I'm a horrible packer. Oh, I'm a horrible repacker, put it that way. I was like, this is it, we're cruising. Everybody get on the ship. We wanna go to Jamaica, getting on the ship. You know, so it was hard to get me to do a land package. 
that's how I fell into cruises. And I've changed my niche several times over, but I still keep my cruise specialty. What was your first niche that you had? The first thing that was like, aha, this is it for me before we moved on to the specializations behind it. I think Ryan is going to say cruises was it always. It, it, all, it really always has been. <laughs> it, so it never, it was never not cruises for me because just like you, I had my first, I had my absolute first cruise experience in 2018. And uh, for context, you said I started in 2017. I had no clue about cruises at all. So there was a learning curve and I jumped in. But when I went on my first ship inspection and I saw what all the hubbub was about, I said, this is why it has to be this. And I was able to take that energy and translate that over to my friends and they got excited. And now I have excitement anytime I get the opportunity to go on another ship. So anytime you see me um, on a, you know, on a, on another slot, on a, another Lido deck or inside another dining room, just know it's because my, my heart is smiling from ear to ear. I'm just, I cannot, I can honestly say that that has always been the thing that I will talk to people. I will talk your ear off about cruising so much so that I have two certifications with, um, the cruise line international association. That is how much I love it. And so it, <clears throat> it has always been my first love. <laughs> And I will never leave it. It is the best. It is the best form of travel. Don't at me. I just see the little hearts coming up behind him. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> behind him. <laughs> um, I would say mine is probably the same of both of you put together. As in when I signed up, I was trying to do everything. I was trying to send it wherever anyone wanted to go. I'm like, let me research it. Let me send them there. And that just became too much because, you know, you're trying to learn and you're trying to be the best at that. But if I'm trying to send everyone everywhere, then that's just taking so much time. And then, of course, since it's in the beginning, everybody is not going anywhere. Technically, I had a lot of people who were wanting and then they were falling off. And then I had that all inclusive. Well, I had a multiple all inclusive experiences. So I was just like Ryan when it comes to cruises, but we're all inclusive. I do. I, I I don't know. Some people might look at it as, as a bad thing. Some people like it is what it is, but I don't do anything outside of all inclusive right now. I, I want to go back to maybe like villas or something. But right now it's like, OK, if it's not all inclusive, I, that's another reason why I created um brown girl travel agents because i'm like i got people who want to go places and i don't want to just throw them to the trash can there's somebody who services these people so if i got to put into a blast to everybody somebody will service them but all inclusives uh do i have hearts too now like i just love them it's just so much fun same thing like how you guys are saying like on the cruises you can go multiple places and the all inclusive i just enjoy that you can just sit there you know i like they both have their pros and their cons and stuff but the way that you feel about cruises i promise i feel about all inclusive and i love that i love just hearing and watching you talk all about those cruises there is so much value with all inclusives i mean i did not i just got hip to the all-inclusive lifestyle like in 2020. So in the middle of a pandemic, I said, all right, I'm gonna learn about all-inclusive. Mm -hmm. So I get the appeal. I understand it mm -hmm. is all of that. It's just for me, it's like you were talking about, uh, all-inclusive for me is a cruise on, is a, is a, it's a, a cruise is an all-inclusive on water. That yeah. is what it is for me. So mm -hmm. I can totally um, get behind all-inclusives. I will sell those and I will send people those all day long. But I'm gonna tell them about a cruise first. Yes, <laughs> I still throw that in there just in case. Right, I do want to share this too. Right. <laughs> well, I want to give a shout out to Latria Watley because she just became a travel agent last week, and it's always great to see new agents popping up on here, jumping in and learning. Now, guys, I want you to understand when I, for me, I like all inclusives. I like cruises. But my best part about either of them when with my luxury niche and everything like that is when they first walk into that cruise ship, they first walk into that resort. I want my clients to feel like like jaw dropping comic book where they got to pick it up and carry it to their room because they're just like jaw dropping surprise. I like what I love about doing the whole luxury thing and catering it with the culture and the cuisine is because whether I'm doing um, an all-inclusive Caribbean, whether we're going to Greece, whether we're going to Dubai or we're going to Bali, which we are going to Bali, I want to include excursions. I want to include dinners. I want to make sure you have all your rides. 
and transportation. So basically for me, mine's is more about, it's not always going to be all inclusive as far as all the drinks and food, but you won't have to worry about who's picking you up from the airport. You don't have to worry about what hotel you're staying at, where your transportation is, what dinner is going to be, because I will plan you dinners. Your, all your excursions are going to be around culture and food because you're going to eat and learn at the same time. So that's where my culture and cuisine all inclusive goes into. Now, we have a question that two of us I know can answer. Ryan, do you see that lovely question? I see that question. That question is fantastic. I love that. Yes, I have. <laughs> I have been on it. It's it is an experience to say the least. I did go on Virgin Voyages Scarlet Lady um, just this past October. And Tisha, you were talking about that one moment when they enter into a resort or when they first get on the deck. The Virgin Voyages Scarlet Lady, the moment you first enter it in, you feel like you've come into a spa. And I don't know about you, but I love that fresh smell a brand new ship that has just come through and you are one of the first few people to experience it and the smell and the sights, everything is just glowing and you just see all of this beauty in front of you and you are you can't wait to explore the whole ship. And it's such a great experience to send people to try that out for themselves so that they can see it too. So I know for a fact that Virgin Voyage Scarlet Lady is definitely one of the cruise ships, if you have not been on it yet, you have to find a way to get on it as soon as possible. Try it for yourself so that you can have that experience and then you'll see that it'll be easy to translate that over to your clients. I am telling you, it is it is not a cruise to miss. I haven't been on it, but I heard something about the top deck. What was going, what's going on on the top deck? Oh, you you talking about- um, The um, Odyssey party? No, the, the Brun Brunson's deck. The, mm -hmm. for the for the for the rooftop yeah oh yeah, the yeah, yeah. yeah i was in there so because i was on the ship in january mm -hmm. and Fair yes answer. it is beautiful there's beautiful views beautiful drinks and there's hot tubs throughout the whole place so you have your own private place to do that i was on the ship when i got on the ship i went as a rock star and we went with a group i'm gonna tell you now as agents if you go anywhere whether you are going as a fam trip, TA rate or whatever, invite other people to go with you so you come home to a paycheck. I don't care, invite people. We went on this cruise and it was 10 of us. And out of the 10, two were agents. The food on that ship, let me tell you, some of us cried because the food was so good. It really, it's, it really oh, is. It's, the food, and it's and like, different. It's all included. When you get on the ship, the only thing you have to pay for is drinks. It, Trust and believe those drinks are reasonably priced. They have things set up so you can start a bar tab or sale a loot so your clients, as well as yourself, could put funds down in advance and they'll have plenty of money to do their drinking and everything else. Um, for those at Richard's Rooftop, thank you, Jones. The training that they have is amazing. Go ahead and do that training. Get to the gold tier because until you get to, I believe, the gold tier, you don't have access to the TA rates that come through the system. But the food is amazing. Gunbai, which is the Korean place, is so fun. We played the Gunbai game 369 in the Mexican restaurant, had all the workers looking at us. The technology is great. The customer service is great. There are no kids on this ship. Like everything on this ship was amazing. So if you are into cruises and that is something you want to specialize in, I advise you to book a trip. They do, um, they have four ships that are going to be sailing by the end of this year. Um, and three of them are going to be doing New Year Eve sailings. But yes, Virgin Voyages is definitely is definitely a way to go. And um, Joan says that she was on Scarlet Lady in December 21. And she's scheduled in June. And Resilient Lady in December. We're actually scheduled to go in January 23. Um, schedule's not up, but we're doing something to make sure we get on that schedule. Because mm -hmm. we're going back again. You know, so one of the things I want to ask you, you guys is the training. Because that's one of the things that people say, you know, I know what my niche is going to be. I know what I want to do, but how do I become a specialist or specialize in it, especially something like health and wellness or just all inclusive? Because it's very different than saying I'm going to specialize in a specific cruise line or a specific resort. What did you guys do to or are still doing, I should say, to become specialists in your niche? So when it comes to. Um, when it comes to studying for my specialty or basically being well invested in my niche, I spend a lot of my time looking at the types of destinations and learning about all of the 
types of activities that they have pertaining to health and wellness and how I can best advocate that for my clients. So I became a Los Cabos specialist because it's a great place for spa. And for those that haven't been there, know, know that they have plenty of places for yogis and other people to hang out, but it's also a great gastronomy destination as well. I've also learned about the destinations based on the types of, um, the, the types of uh, accommodations that they offer there as, in addition to that. So LeBlanc is a very high-end luxury spa um, all-inclusive resort that's worth checking out. And I take that time to study it so that I can be up to date on what I can offer my clients and give them that best experience. But I also use some of the resources that we have available to us as travel advisors um, on the internet via our research. So we have access to Travel Agent Academy, the Travel Institute, Travel Agent University, just to name a few, where we can learn more about these specialties and we can soak in that information from different avenues so that we're basically able to be as well-rounded as possible. And a lot of it also comes from being able to pull from experiences. So when I'm doing these FAM trips or when I'm doing these site inspections, I'm doing them with the expectation of what are some potential pitfalls that my clients may experience if they're looking for a true spa experience? Or what are some of the things that I need to let my clients know about if I want them to know that they, they want to have a wellness experience? And last, how can I enhance it so that it can really put their own experience over the top, right? It's about being able to take what you know and then apply it so that your clients will see that there is value in booking with an advisor versus just doing it by yourself. Very great answer. Like, I'm like, over here, like, that was, God was great. <laughs> like, everything he said, basically. <laughs> <laughs> everything he said, um, just making sure when I'm looking at these, like he said, every, literally everything he said when I'm going on these site inspections and fam trips, just seeing what is special um, about this resort or who I can pitch these resorts to. Um, an example that came to my mind is like um, Ryu Properties. I know a lot of travel agents who kind of steer away from um, Ryu clients or, I mean, Ryu Properties or maybe um, they have special ones that they only do. But Ryu Properties are great for my client, my clients when they don't really know much because this is their first time going to an all-inclusive. I know Reeves are going to give a party vibe. Um, it's kind of more Americanized, so it's not like a drastic change. Um, and then I can kind of build off of that, you know, and then you got clients who maybe I don't want to send them to a breathless because they're not wanting that turn up. You know, they're not, I got, my mom went to the one in Punta Cana and she sent me a video it was literally with so much booty shaking everywhere. I'm like, everybody don't want all them booty shakes on their face. So maybe that's not somewhere that I, I was fun at breathless. That's what I, I hear great, great <laughs> things about breathless. So just knowing, being able to research the resorts and then of course knowing my clients so I would be able to mesh them in the most way. And also making sure, because I saw this in the um, Brown Girl Travel Agent, someone was saying, I was like, yes, that you want to also market what you're specializing in. You know, if I'm going and I'm getting my Ryu training and then I'm not saying anything about Ryu training, then what did I even do that for? Yes, I can still send clients there, but I want people to know I did all that training. I did all that research. So why am I not pushing that out and trying to send people there? And, you know, a lot of the resorts, they have um, like marketing areas in their travel agent portals where you can go grab pictures and grab videos and stuff and making sure those are the things I'm trying to push out if I don't have content myself from there. Yeah. And like um, Ryan said, like there's a travel institute. So since I wanted to focus more on luxury, I got certified as a luxury specialist through my host agency. And then I went and got de designated as a luxury specialist for my entire agency by the travel institute. I also have been doing just like the other people have said, I've done the fam trips to um, the different places. Now, I don't go on every single fam trip because if it's not a resort I'm not interested in or that's not going to work for my clientele, there's no, like for me, I'm not a Ryu person. My clients are above Ryu. I'm not going to, a, I'm not going to go on a fam trip that is just doing Ryu. I'm going to send somebody else who, who could benefit from it. If it's on the docket and it's someplace else, yeah, I'll go, but it's not going to be the main reason I go. But I have specializations in um, Virgin Voyages. I have it in most of the cruise lines, a lot of the different resorts. And guys, as TA agents, go to these TA back offices. Like Jania said, there's tons of marketing back there, training back there. 
where you do not need to physically go to a location to sell a location. I have sent people places I have never been and waited for their photos so I can act like I've been. Because I want to hear how you did it. Because I watched Ryan me on a ship and I'd be like, what ship when you going and when we going? Like, hold on, why didn't you call me? But I'd be living through his photos and he knows it. Now we have a question. The question is from Sheen. Do you go on fam trips to the same place multiple times over time to see if there have been changes to the resort and experience? For me, no. I don't continuously go to the same location unless they have been updated, redone. Like for instance, um, Royalton Chic Punta Cana just got redone. I had never made it prior to, but if I had been to it before and they just did a whole facelift and change, I would go back again. But at the same time, I wouldn't wait for a fam trip to be set up to go. I would just go. I would set up a TA rate trip if I can get one. And I would just grab some folks, make some money and just go. Like I'm actually going to Punta Cana um, Chic in August. I have some agents who are celebrating my birthday with me. So in return, I'm setting up a mini fam trip for them, a one day event. So you're going to you're going to get educated while the rest of my crew comes in. And then, you know, it's a work play, you know, you know how that works, you know, tax purposes, see a CPA. Um, but no, I personally won't go the same time multiple times over and over unless there's been a big change to the resort. How about or a cruise line? How about you guys? I have been to I actually just came back from Punta Cana um, a couple of days ago. So <laughs> and I went in May last year. I think that there is value in going multiple times, but I think the value lies in seeing different properties that you haven't seen before. So the first time I went, I did it for the sake of, I did not have, I could not tell the difference between one all-inclusive to another. So the benefit was being able to see what's offered, see the options, and to see what the lay of the land looks like. Because you get a lot of information about locations, you get a lot of information about what's currently going on in the country and how you can best let your clients know. Like I wouldn't have known information about Mexico as an example where it's better to give them private transfers than shared ones because they're going to be doing infrastructure work on the highways and the roads for the next six months. And that is not something that I can learn just by, you know, looking it up or Googling it. That's something that I need to have those connections with and being in location helps. So I did, um, when I did do my, my inspections, I did inspections for four new resorts I've never been to to kind of get more insight on um, the different types of vendors that I would be interested in working with and to help create um, new relationships. So um, I've also done uh, the same cruise multiple times. So that one was by accident though. I didn't do that intentionally, but that one was, uh, that one was an accident. It was the Norwegian Encore. So I've seen the ship four times at least. Okay. I can't, I can't lie. I can't lie. <laughs> I've done that with Norwegian. I think I may have done it with him to be yeah. honest with you. Yeah, um, we're Norwegian heads and virgin heads right now. So I have been on the Encore, the Joy and um, the Bliss at least twice. Right. And I mean, you can tell I mean, I, I cannot pull myself away from the ship. I just can't. It's just one of those things. There's nothing I, wrong with that. There's right. nothing wrong with that. <laughs> but, but one of the but but the other benefit of it, again, is you always get fresh new content. So like you said, Royals and Chic did just get a facelift. It looks beautiful. I love what they've done with the place. It was the last site inspection I did before I came back. And you also get that as an opportunity to get you know, pictures, things that you may not have been able to see the first time you get to see again, you get to refresh yourself, you get to get yourself updated. Because especially in times where we are right now, protocols are changing for COVID all the time. You want to see how they're handling it now. And if that's going to be something that you need to address with your clients later. Just my two cents. Um, I would say... It, it happens, but not on purpose. Like, I'm not like, oh, I want to go on Punta and then, oh, I need, like, it. I don't know. I, I would say I have no problem with it. Um, and I know that, especially with me venturing into, I'm starting to host fam trips to where it's about to be inevitable um, that I'm going to these places over and over again. But um, just just as Ryan said, it's, it's, you know, it's getting refreshed. It's You can get more content, um, you know, 
last time you went, like when I went, I went with Vacation Express last April, um, and I was only doing like court. This is before I started my YouTube channel, before I started anything with content, and I was only going sideways, and I just didn't even know what I was going to get out of that. Well, then I started a YouTube channel, ended up getting monetized, and then now that that's out of the way, I start doing reels now, and it's for Instagram and TikTok, and those need to be horizontal. So now I'm like, I need to go back to all of these resorts again, so I can go it this way instead of this way. So it's like each time I go like you're saying maybe um because you know we get home and it's like wow i got like three photos i got like four videos it's not like we can go right down the street and like let me go get a couple more so it's like next time i go what are things that i didn't get what are some pictures or some stuff that i didn't really harp on i didn't even get to try the restaurants last time so this time i'm gonna try those so trying to look at it like that but that's where if you know like like i said vacation express they have to say they have a fam trip or somebody else says they have one i'm like yeah i'll go back because Half of those resorts I, I might have seen before, but maybe I'll see some different ones. Or, but intentionally, I will probably say no. But it kind of just happens that I end up. I've, I've, you said you just got back from Punta last year. I think I went to Punta three times, and two of those times were out of fam trips. But I still got a chance to go to some different ones. So not on purpose, but like I, that was so funny. She just said, "Um, actually, <laughs> it kind of just happens, especially like y'all are saying when you fall in love with the place, like the Hyatts. I've I've toured the Hyatts in Punta Cana probably like three different times, but I don't mind because every time I go, I'm like, oh, I need to get a little more footage or maybe I'll go live this time, you know, to, to be able to showcase a little more. Oh my yeah, god. I've been on fan trips where I've been to um the same resort. Like we went to the Royalton and um um Cancun and I had stayed there for Christmas with a friend of mine, another agent. And I was like, yeah, I've been here already. I've done all of this, but we're going to walk. But we got to go to a restaurant I wasn't able to go to because I wasn't in that category. So I got to eat at a restaurant that I never been to and the food was amazing. You know, so I don't mind going to the same location if it's different resorts or it's a favorite resort of mine. Like I will go to any fam trip that does Charisma, Royalton. Yes, yeah, those I are the top love two. Charisma. So if it's any of those two, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll be there. I'll be there like Michael Jackson. I'll be there. You know, can't sing y'all. But, you know, so one of the things that, you know, as we start to wrap this up and everything, we all discovered our niches. We all discovered our sub niches and everything like that. Why do you feel it's important for a travel agent to figure out their niche in this business? Uh, for me, the number one reason why you want to do that is to avoid burnout, because when you try to be a resource for everybody or a resource to nobody, um, the key is to find out what it is that you're passionate about. You tend to you tend to, to be energetic or you tend to have a different um, you tend to be perceived differently when you know that your heart is really into it because you love it versus when you're selling it because you know that's just what your client wants. And it's okay to say, that's not my specialty, but I can forward someone over to you because there is plenty of business out there that's looking for just what you want to sell. There is a tribe that is out there for you. Um, and you don't want to spend your time inundated with a bunch of leads, dead leads at that, that could be about things that you're not passionate about all for the sake of trying to to drum up that business. And of course, where you are in your in your journey as a travel advisor is going to have some um, variance for this. But at the end of the day, the best thing that you can do for yourself is honor your commitment for your niche first and foremost, and do everything that you can to establish yourself as excellence in that category, because that is what will shine through, and that's what people will seek you out for. Mm. Exactly. Like, like that was almost like a mic drop moment. Like, yes, ugh. that was good because with you, you, it, like you said at the end, like it allows you to become an expert. You know, I absolutely love all inclusive. So now that I'm able to focus really solely on all inclusive, then that allows me to position myself more as an expert. When I am sharing with these clients and they're asking where they should go, these are places I know, like the back of my hand, because I've taken the time to research, I've taken the time to go. You know, if I'm doing everywhere, you know, a lot of ages, we don't like doing air only, you know, but there are some who do. So like he said, like, it's going to be a difference when somebody, I mean, I'm not going to proceed, like, I'm not going to push it out like that. But the way that I'm taking care of air only versus somebody who wants to go to Jamaica and they want to stay at breathless and they want to stay for seven days and they want to go out and they want to do all these fun stuff. That's going to 
in my mind, when I'm getting things done, it's automatically going to be like, I want to take care of this. I'm so excited to take care of this versus that. I know I got to take care of this. This is my client. But then it's like your mindset is just kind of different versus, like you said, finding somebody who that's what they do. And they will be able to feel their passion like you would be able to with this other thing. So it just allows you to position yourself. People trust you more because that's all you're talking about. That's all you're posting. That's all you're sending people to. So it's like, wow, she really knows what he's, she's doing. Wow. He really loves this place. Cause he's always, so let me try it out because it just seems like it's just really a, a nice place. So yeah, just positioning yourself. And like you said, like burnout, I'm over here trying to figure out, um, I don't know, de de destination. I don't want to say destination weddings or something that's out of my niche. Now I'm putting all of this time to learning that versus I can just be working in my niche versus later, maybe once I get my groove with my niche and I want to venture out, I can try and stuff. But I have that niche established. I have it. I, this is my thing. This is this is me and my baby. And then I can try to, you know, venture out a little bit. So we have a good question. And I think it's a good question. How to is basically, do you have any advice for transitioning niches? Once establishing, establishing myself as a blank agent, how do you not get stuck in that niche? You only get stuck if you make yourself stuck. Because when I first got started, I was doing cruises and like Ryan, I was like, okay, I'll do land because I need money. But how about a cruise instead? And then I realized that I was being known as they called me the foodie agent. Because if you looked at my timeline, you looked at my IG, I was either traveling or eating or talking about traveling or talking about eating. So I said, look, why don't we just put this together? Now, my niche is culture and cuisine, but it's not just land. It's also cruise ships. It's also escorted trips. It's also local trips. But my niche is culture and cuisine, but my sub niches might be, would, would be cruises next. It would be cruises next. Then it would be all inclusive behind it. You know, So it's like you only get stuck if you stick yourself there. Because I was like, when I transitioned out of luxury, one of the things I started doing was I changed the way I posted. I changed what I posted. So instead of always just doing um, deals and steals, I don't do those no more. I share with you values and deals. I don't, I'd share with people, when I share luxury cruises, when I do cruises, you get the sweet life. I don't show you a balcony room unless, unless it's the, the new NCL cruise ships because them balcony rooms look like sweets. That's a whole nother conversation. But I'm going to show you the value and how you can be pampered and the luxury behind it. So like I have a Greek trip that I'm working was well, is done, but the Greek trip that I'm doing, the only request the husband have was make it look like I did it. And we need to do a photo shoot with the dresses. So I put this whole trip together, 10 days and gave it to him. And it was like, wait, this is more than what we asked for. And it's in budget. And we get this. I love when the, don't y'all love when the client does that. And I get this and I got that. And you did this and their voice just keeps getting higher because they're so excited. You know, so don't feel that you're going to be stuck. You, you can transition, but you just, just do it slowly. Don't say I'm doing cruises and you've been doing cruises for two years. And then the next day you just say, okay, I'm only doing Disney. Slowly transition, go to Disney cruises, you know, work your way over. How do you guys feel about transitioning? And did you ever transition your niche? I think it's more about, um, I think it basically I, I agree with everything that you said. And what I heard when you said that was you have an overarching niche, but under that you have brackets, branches of how your niche is expressed. And even if it's in a local trip in Texas or if it's a trip to Greece or if it's on a cruise to the Caribbean, you highlight the niche because that is where your passion is. So if you're just transitioning your niche from being something specific about cult culture and culinary to something more about history and arts or health and wellness, you start to integrate your conversation. So you start talking about those components more and more and acclimate your base and start by changing the narrative, challenging the narrative that people may have about you. So as an example, it's for me, health and wellness is my niche and cruises is how I choose to express it. But I've also given people excellent service when it comes to sending them to all inclusives because of the way that I like to showcase what is offered and what's available through that same lens and letting them know that they can express it in different ways. But I very rarely talk about it. What I do is, is that I give them the information that they need, but I tell them first and foremost that this is what I specialize in. I just happen to know about this as well. So 
I agree. Just like you said, you do not have to be stuck. You just have to adopt a mindset of being able to pivot and being able to change the narrative that you speak with your clients, both when you're marketing, but also when you're talking people to face to face. As being the third person, I feel like every time it gets to me, like everything, everything that they said. So like, literally, I just want to say, like, just remember, because like um, she was saying earlier, like with your agency, with anything, you're not stuck unless you get the glue and you stick yourself. You know, there are ways that you are able to get out of it, just like the niche or the host agency or whatever the case may be. You know, it, it'll come over time. I, I got into all inclusive because that's where I love to be. So that's what's fun to me. I'm able to be passionate and express that this is so much fun. Now, if over time, you know, I get on the Scarlet Lady and I'm like, listen, 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 we got to add that into the, then that's fine. Like, I think the, the word that I love most I ran said was pivot. You're not, we're not going to go an abrupt change, but just pivot, just start to turn and change, figure out if there's a way that you can kind of do both in the beginning and then go to the next one. Um, so yeah, you're not stuck unless you view yourself as stuck. Yeah. One of the things that um, I think is really great about niches that we've all said in our own separate way, our niches express our passion. We're passionate about what our niche is. My passion is culinary and culture, C and C. And you know, I'm slowly starting to integrate health and wellness in it because that's become a sub passion for me because I had, you know, some medical issues. But you know, I want to be passionate. Be passionate about your business. If you're not passionate, nobody else is going to be passionate. Some people are going to say, guys, that you know what, you're a little crazy, that you're being obsessive and stuff like that. But guess what? Be obsessed with your business because they're not working your business. They're not helping you. You know, we all have passion. And a lot of the things that we're talking about, any one of us could literally do because um, Jania loves to do all inclusives. I can do all inclusives too and throw a culture and cuisine spin to it. The same way she could take the all inclusive and throw a culture and cuisine spin. And we can all throw that the health and wellness spin on a cruise. So we can take our niches and run to rotate them through any form of transportation and travel. Because if you notice, none of our niches are stuck on a specific mode of transportation. It's just all inclusive. So what's going to happen is we're going to go ahead and invite Jania to go on a all inclusive cruise so she can understand what it means to be on an AI cruise ship where you walk on the ship and the only thing you pay for is the spa services. And then she's going to be like, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you know, like, look, I got a backpack that's in the room ready to go. But, you know, one of the things you got to understand, guys, and I'm sure everybody here can understand is your niche does not need to be a mode of transportation. It is a style of travel. It is a lifestyle of travel. You know, I've watched Ryan over the past couple of years and he has been true, true to cruises. The boy loves cruises. But he has grown from booking anybody who wants to go to now networking and growing with health and wellness people, going to yogis, going to spa people, going to fitness trainers. I've watched him elevate his love of cruising to health and wellness and cruising. And guys, understand just because you're on a cruise ship does not mean you can't get healthy, does not mean you can't work out, does not mean like they will do classes to show you how to eat properly on a cruise ship. We're probably going to ignore the training, but it's great to know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that <laughs> and <laughs> uh, with Virgin Voyages, I just love you know their um their their drinks. They they have that that those health drinks that you have on the back of Scarlet Lady. Do you remember? I was those? there. I was oh there. my gosh, I I I mean, there's so many different ways, and we've been. I mean, we've all said this too. There's so many different ways in how people define luxury. There's so many different ways in how people define their own personal health and wellness. And my my goal is to find out how they want that to be best expressed, right? And so for them, it may just be able to sit and relax by the pool because that's wellness to them, being able to unplug. But for others, it may be an 8 a.m. jog on the on the on the track. I mean, that's not necessarily me. I will be in the gym, but I'm not going to, you know, like I don't like jogging around the track. But Ultimately, at the end of the day, it's like we, it's like you said, when you when you start recognizing the target that you want to go after, if you're not going after you, then, some, then you know, there has to be something else to it. Right. You want to go after people that look like you or act like you in the sense that they are interested in the same thing that you are. It is easy to talk to me about going on a cruise. I'm there. I'm sold. Right. 
I don't have to convince myself. So I want to go with other people that are easily um, excited by the prospect of going somewhere where I can tell them this will be the wellness experience of your life that you absolutely cannot miss. Well said, well said. So as we close out, um, I'm going to give everybody a chance <clears throat> to say any any last things you want to say to the agents watching now and later when it comes to niches. And just to be fair, Janaya, Jana, we're going to let you go first. Okay, thanks. <laughs> just to, um, and this is really, really for the new agents trying to find their niche, like enjoy the process. Enjoy the learning, you know, the curves that you go through. And if you start here and you end there and start off, like you just said, with what you love. What you love, because like in everything you just said, <laughs> everything you just said, you're going to be able to talk to these people about the things that you love because you're so passionate about it. So that's a great place to start. And then you can venture off, even if it's local travel, if it's domestic, whatever it is, if it's um, well, health and wellness, whatever, whatever you enjoy. Sit and think about why you started it, why you became an agent. And if you could go anywhere and do anything right now, start with that. Let's start there. That, that's how. And then let's kind of grow from there but enjoy it have fun with it this is your baby your business what do you want your niche to be and don't glue yourself don't grab mm -hmm. the glue <laughs> ryan do you have anything you want to add on drop I another mic I, over I, here I, I think i only have two points to add it i mean you know i love hearing it's like enjoy the process i hear i hear embrace the process be willing to embrace change recognize that this is going to be a process as you learn about the things that you like, be comfortable knowing that what you like may change over time and that's okay. Also recognize that a niche does not mean you cannot sell other things. It just means that as a specialty, this is what you are choosing to do. This is like choosing a major in college. Everybody in some capacity has to go through those general education requirements. Then after those two years, you get to pick what you want. Some people know immediately what their niche is, and that's great. But some people need a little bit of time to figure it out. That's good, too. Ultimately, you want to make this decision so that you're comfortable with it because you are representing you at the end of the day. I love a good picture story. And that was good. That was a good one. Like you're going to college. That's that, I like that. I like that. <laughs> So guys, we're gonna go ahead and wrap it up. The last thing that I have honestly to say besides thank you to my guests for being here. We tried to do 30, 40 minutes, never quite works out, but hey, great information was given. You know, don't be scared about your niche. Don't be scared about your business. You know, we've all been there. We've all been at the beginning, the middle, and none of us will be at the end. And we're always going to be learning. Your niche will change as you change, as your business change, as your clientele changes. Don't force a niche to change. Do not sit there and say, I'm going to go luxury because that's what everyone's talking about if you don't have a luxury background, if you don't have luxury training. And as sad as to say, if you don't look, look luxurious, I'll be very honest with you when it comes to the luxury and dealing with the upper class, you have to have a certain image when you're talking to them, when you're dealing with them, you know, and that's something else that we can talk about presentation when it comes to being a business owner. But understand that there are going to be certain caveats and different things that you're going to have to do. You are going to have to step out of your box, regardless of whatever it is. You're going to have to step out of your box. So if you're used to hiding behind the computer and you're trying to get into luxury, health and wellness and business owners and stuff like that, guess what? You got to go meet them. They're not going to come to you and go, I'm ready. It would be great, but it's not going to happen. Um, to those of you who are watching now or later, make sure you go into the description. I have their Instagrams, I have Facebooks, I have websites. I even have the link for my group that I'm starting up. It will launch on the 10th of March and I am doing a business coaching group. And basically it is going to be for people who want to be coached on how to have a successful travel business. This is not going to be a, how do I book group? I, I don't do those because you can go on the website and get that, or you could talk to your personal, um, people may have brought you in type situations. It is open to any travel agent anywhere, whether you are a host agent, because I know some of these people watching own their own agencies. Some people are part of host agencies. You know, everyone gets into the industry very differently. And I respect how everyone gets in because you're here and that's the best part about it. 
Um, but yeah, take a look at the link. It's going to launch on the 10th and we're going to do some trainings. We're going to do some books. Yes, guys, you're going to have to read because if I had to read it, you're going to read it. But it's going to be about how to grow yourself professionally, how to grow yourself personally, how to do some marketing. There will be some special guests throughout the time. It's going to be an ongoing group. And of course, all the information will be saved in the group. So if you do not join in the first couple of weeks, you'll be able to see the old information in the group. And I'm like super excited. And let's see, you know, for those watching now or later, because we're going to go ahead and get off in a minute, but put into the comments other trainings that you want to hear, um, whether it's from me, Ryan, Jania, what other things you want to see us talk about? And we'll try to get more people to come in. And if we're lucky, we can even get some of our BDMs and suppliers to come in and do some trainings with us as well. So with that being said, we're going to say goodbye, farewells, and say la vie. And we'll talk to you guys later. Thank you Everybody so say much. bye. Bye, guys.